When you get your soil test results, you're gonna have the nutrient concentration. I'm gonna use phosphorus as an example, and that can be applicable to other nutrients. You have phosphorus concentration. You have, for instance, 10 parts per million or 20 pounds per acre of phosphorus. More important than that concentration is how the nutrient is rated. It can be low, medium, or high. In some states, it can be, you can have additional rating. You can have very low and very high concentration of that particular nutrient. What, what that means is usually when the nutrient is at a medium or higher level, you don't expect an increase in, in forage production. So basically you apply phosphorus or potassium, if the soil tested medium or higher in that particular nutrient, you're not gonna increase production by adding that nutrient. Interpreting the soil test results can be an overwhelming task. Sometimes the lab result, uh, reports a lot of stuff. Sometimes the units that the lab reports can be different than what you're typically used to. So the first thing that we highly encourage producers is to contact your extension or university personnel. They should be able to help you interpret the results. A good strategy to interpret your soil results is to compare the soil test results with the tissue sample. Uh, when you sample the tissue, that what you're getting is a snapshot of that field at that particular time of the year. If you come back to the same field and collect another tissue sample, some of the nutrients are gonna be highly different for various reasons. So that's why to be able to interpret the tissue results, it's important to have the soil test results with you in hand so you can see uh, some of the properties that might be affecting the nutrient accumulation in the plant. So now I'm gonna demonstrate how to collect a tissue sample. As you can see, you don't need any special tool. What I have here is a clean bucket and a pair of scissors. So what you wanna do is make sure that you cover the entire field. So walk in a, you can walk in a zigzag pattern or a random pattern, whatever makes sense for your field. And then I'm gonna cut a sample here and I'm targeting the height that will be harvested. So I place in the bucket and I walk to a different location. Collect another sample. You don't need a lot of sample. As long as the sample represents the field, you don't need a lot of material because the lab will only use a couple grams. And then you repeat the same procedure at least 15 to 20 times in a given area. There's a couple things that are with tissue testing that don't apply to soil sample. So for instance, it's a live plant material. In that case, the handling is even more important than the soil sampling. Samples need to be collected and send it immediately to a lab. We also recommend not to keep the samples in the heat. So the dashboard of the pickup truck is not the ideal place to store the sample. Ziploc bags are also not the ideal container to submit your sample. So paper bags and uh, submit the tissue sample as soon as possible to the lab. The ideal situation when you're collecting the tissue sample is hopefully you're collecting the same time that you are doing your soil sampling. When you have both information, the soil test results with the tissue sampling, it gives you a more holistic information about the soil fertility status. If you have any sort of uh, application of herbicide or even fertilizer, we've seen producers collecting samples, that's not the ideal time to collect the tissue sample. And the plants need to be actively growing, that's another important aspect. So, Again, if we are doing our soil sampling in the fall, sample, tissue sample can be collected at the same time of the year. However, that needs to be done before the first frost. After the first frost, it's probably not the best ideal time of the year to collect tissue samples. So the first step when we think, we're thinking in terms of managing soil fertility for hay fields or pasture is correct the pH. Once the pH is within that recommended range for your particular crop, which in Florida, for instance, is around five and a half or six. Then we start thinking in terms of what nutrients will be required. So in terms of nutrient management, nitrogen is probably the most important nutrient because it's the nutrient that's exported in greater amounts if we're talking about a hay field. Potassium is also equally important because the concentration in the tissue is almost the same as nitrogen. So basically what, a, what that means is you are removing as much potassium as nitrogen from the hay field when you are harvesting that forage. However, there are other nutrients that are also important in some areas. 
Fosters can be a concern in some areas. In Florida, we usually, it's rarely a concern. We have uh, soils that have high phosphorus concentration, but in some states, that can be a, a very uh, important component to have a, a sustainable hay field production. In terms of how fertilizer is applied, especially if we're talking about hay fields, and I mentioned that our soils retain, have a lim limited uh, ability to retain nutrients, it's important to make multiple fertilizer applications throughout the year, especially if we're talking a very intensive hay operation. So if you're harvesting mu multiple cups of hay in that same uh, field, it's important to spread that fertilizer application throughout the growing season. Because our soils in the southeastern United States are very um, coarse texture, many times they have very limited nutrient holding capacity. That strategy that to improve, build up nutrients in the soil sometimes cannot be achievable or cost a lot of money, can also cause some unintended environmental consequences. So for instance, in Florida, fertilizer recommendations are based on the crop requirements. So we want to provide the crops with the nutrients that are required for optimum production. Lastly, I highly encourage you to work with your local county extension agent or university personnel. They'll be able to provide you the best science-based information to help you produce as much as hay as possible and good quality hay in our area.